So let me do some homework problems for you. Okay, uh, last night's homework, some of you had some trouble doing these. So first one I want to do is number 16. Yes. There were two parts. One, they wanted you to solve this equation, quadratic equation, uh, you, using completing the score method. Second is, of course, just factor. Okay, and of course, just factoring is easier, but why do you think they ask you to do the completing the score method? Yeah, because you could use it for every time. Uh, sometimes trinomials will not be factorable, right? So here they're trying to verify that, okay, we still get the same answer if we do it the other way. But sometimes, you know, you can't factor, so we now know how to solve those, okay? So it was just everybody, how many people got this right? Raise your hand. And not, not too many of you, so that's, okay, so let's go through this. If you got it right, maybe you could help me as we go this along, okay? All right, so first step is to do what? Um, if I have 3c squared minus 7c equals 6, if I want to complete the square, one person remembers, two, everyone should know, my first step, very first step should be what? Claire, what do you think? Can I complete the square right now? Yes. No, you cannot, because you have 3 as a coefficient of c squared. What must the coefficient of the uh, variable square have to be? Oh, one. It has to be one. So you have to divide both sides by? Three, guys. This is your first step. If you don't do this, there's no way you're going to be able to complete the square. Okay, once I do this then, Chuck, what do I get? Left side becomes? I got C squared minus 7 over 3, C minus 2. Oh, no. Oh, equals 2? Oh, equals to 2. Yes, very good, very good. And remember, this. what's my B? My B is, is it negative or positive? Negative. I even wrote it as an addition. Some people don't see that negative because it's, right, it's really important that you understand that your B is negative because if your B is negative, you know, we ha this will become, by the way, we have to complete the square now, right? So what do we, how do we complete the square? What do we need to, so this is the key step, guys. Do we need to add both sides by something squared? Right? You guys remember? To complete the square, you have to add both sides by something squared. What is that something? Yes, Samuel. One half? Yes. B times half, which is the same as dividing B by 2, right? So, what do we get when we divide seven, negative 7 over 3 by 2? The same thing as multiplying negative 7 over 3 times 2, and 1 over 2, right? What do we get, guys? We get 7 over 6? Nope. We get negative 7 over 6. You need to write that down. Why is that important to write down as negative? Okay, you'll see why in a minute. But do you see this is a key step? Whenever you do these, okay, you know that you gotta, in order to complete the square, you have to uh, add both sides by something square, right? So, uh, like, ask yourself, what do I need to add both sides by? Well, it's going to be whatever that b is, right, divided by 2, square. Does that make sense? So all you need is this, negative 7 over 6 squared. And why is this negative important? Because... Yeah, let's move this up a little bit. And there's a reason why we didn't multiply this out, right? Negative 7 over 6, we didn't multiply it out. Because on the left side, here, you don't need any, there's no math involved. What does this trinomial become when you write it as a uh, square of a binomial? Square of a binomial. What do you get on the left side? This is a part where it doesn't require any math. What does this form become? Yeah, Samuel. Yeah, it just becomes c minus 6, I mean c minus 7 over 6, the whole thing squared. Do you see where I got the c from? Right, that's where that first, right, variable that's being squared, <coughs> minus, why do, how do I know this is minus? Because your, your b was negative, right? It's going to be c minus 7 over 6. If you want it, you could write this as c plus negative 7 over 6. Same thing, right? Do you see? Do you see why I didn't multiply this out, guys? And do you see why it's important to have that negative in there? Right? Yeah. Even though you know that when you multiply negative twice, it's going to be positive, it's a good idea to leave it this way because you know that it's the same exact things you're going to get. It's the right? first term minus, I mean, first term plus that b, which is negative 7 over 6. So whole thing squared. On the right side, of course, you multiply this out. 7 over 6, if you multiply it twice, you get 49 over 36. Where did the negative go? Yeah. You multiply negative times negative, it's positive, right? Now, how come I'm multiplying 36 over 36 to 2? Two? 2 is really 2 over 1. Why am I doing this class? 
Yeah, common denominator. I need to add these two together, right? So I need a common denominator. So Aaron, what do I get when I do this? I get 72 over 36 plus 49 over 36, right? When I add it together, what do I get? So on the right side, I get 72 plus 49 gives you 121, right? Yeah, 121 over 36. We like 121 and 36, right? These are all perfect squares, aren't they? All you have to do is what, guys? Do we like this now? We have something square equals to some number. That's positive. All you have to do is what? Square root both sides. Right? When you square root both sides, don't forget to put plus or minus. Square root and the square cancel out. Right? Does this make sense? So this becomes C minus 7 over 6 equals to positive or negative 11 over 6. Because 121 is a perfect square of 11. Right? And then 36 is perfect square of uh, 6. Yes? Does this make sense? Now all you have to do is, are we done? No. no, we need to add both sides by 7 over, 6. 7 over 6. And of course, I want to write this as a 1 fraction because you don't want to leave it as sum of the 2 fractions to not simplify. So I'm going to write 7 plus or minus 11 over 6. Right? And how many number does this represent, guys? 2. two. What's the smaller one? Two. 7 minus 11 over 6. The other is? 7 plus 11 over 6. So therefore, when you do this, you get two solutions, negative 4 over 6, or C equals to 18 over 6. Well, we should simplify this, right? What's negative 4 over 6? Negative 2 thirds. What's 18 over 6? 3. Does this make sense? Okay. So take a look at where you went wrong if you didn't get this right. Okay. This is how you do this. Well, we're not done. Part B says to do this problem by factoring. So we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so, but any questions? So the question is, yes, how do we get that number that when you square both, when you add something square both sides, where did I get negative 7 over 6 from? How did that come, up, come about? That's where a lot of people are having trouble understanding. Where did I get that number, negative 7 over 6? Did it appear magically? No. Chuck, how did, that, how did I get that? You divided b by 2. Yeah, I divided b by 2. What's my b here? Brianna? Yeah, my b was negative 7 over 3. Don't you need to divide that by 2? Right? Well, that's multiplying by a half, right? Mm -hmm. So when you multiply 7, negative 7 over 3 times 1 over 2, don't you get negative 7 over 6? Mm -hmm. That's where I got negative 7 over 6. It didn't just appear, right, mm -hmm. magically. We figured this out because we know, right, to complete the square, that's what you need. You need to add both sides by something square. Well, that something is whatever the b is divided by 2. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, once you know that, then you get the answer. All right, so let's see whether when we factor, what should we get as our answer? We should get negative, negative what was it? Yeah, negative 2 thirds and 3 as our solution. Does that make sense? So let's factor it, okay? Here we go. So then we have, again, 3c squared minus 7c equals to 6. If I want to factor, what do I need to do here, Chris, first? Okay, we need, we're factoring now. We just complete the square. Yeah, you gotta subtract six bo from both sides because whenever you factor, the whole trinomial has to equal to zero. You guys remember this? Otherwise, we don't know how to solve these things. So when you have an equation that's not linear, you make everything, you move everything onto one side so it equals to zero. Then you try to factor this left side. Do we know how to factor this? Right? You write it vertically, remember how to factor? How, how do we get 3c squared? There's only one way. 3c times? No. 3c times? C. C. That's the only Okay. And plus, what do we need then on the right side? Plus what? How do we, which number will work here? Anybody see? One person see it? Do you guys remember how to factor trinomial? Angel? 2n, negative 3 works, doesn't it? If you don't believe me, we can multiply it out, right? 3c times c, of course, you get 3c squared. 3c times negative 3, you get negative 9. 
C times 2, you get 2C. When you add them together, of course, you get 7C, negative. And then 2 times negative 3, you get negative 6. Right? So what does it mean? Well, it means that this trinomial could be written as, as could be uh, written as 3C plus 2 times C minus 3. You could factor that trinomial. And when is this true? This is only true if each of the factors are 0, right? Right? Each of the factors is 0. So this is true if what? 3C plus 2 equals 0 or C minus 3 equals 0. You guys remember this? Remember zero product property? So you could solve for C. Do we get the same answer? Yeah. yeah. So it verifies that completing the square method works. I mean, obviously, in this case, factoring is a lot easier, but we need to know how to to complete the square method because sometimes you can't factor. Right? So have, we both got different answers to that. Do we? We got the same answer. No, like, we got negative 7 plus or minus 11 over 6. Let's go back. Are you talking about this one right here? When yeah. We no, we got C equals to negative 2 thirds or C equals to 3. Didn't we? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't do that. <laughs> okay, you got 7 plus or minus 11 over 6. Well, this represents two numbers, which means 7 minus 11 over 6 or 7 plus 11 over, 11 over 6. Right? You don't leave it this way. That's not simplified. This means 7 minus 11 over 6 or 7 plus 11 over 6, doesn't Is that it? Why I got all my homework wrong? Uh, maybe. Because. Did you leave it this way? Yeah. Okay, then, so yeah, so then this is not completely simplified. This represents two numbers. What are the two numbers that this represents? 7 minus 11 over 6 and 7 plus 11 over 6. So. Okay, and so once you simplify, you just get negative 2 thirds or C equals to 3. Right, guys? And as you can see, when we when it factors, uh, you can see that you get the same exact answer. You better, right? Otherwise, we did something wrong, right? Does that make sense? No matter how you do it, once you solve the same equation, you should get the same answer. All right, any questions now? Okay, is this a bit helpful now? Some parts that you guys are having trouble? Let's do some more, okay? So hopefully you, know, you get this, okay? Here we go. So let's do 22, because not all of you got this right. You got a squared plus a over three equals to three. As you can see, this equation, could you factor this? No, your b is of, uh, uh, what is your b, by the way? One. A over three. Is your b a over 3? No. Uh, one. One. b is the coefficient of a. So what is your b? One third. It's one third. Oh. Be careful. So your b is one third. So you don't know how to factor something that has a coefficient of a fraction, right? Coefficient is a fraction. So only way we know how to uh, solve this equation, then, is to use Completing the square method. So, uh, thankfully, our coefficient of a squared is 1. So, we're ready to complete the square. So, what do we need to add both sides by? So, again, your b is what again? It's not a over 3. It's just simply 1 over 3. Maybe I should write that. Okay, but uh, what is it that you have to add both sides by? Brianna, this would, can you tell us? What do we need to add both sides by? Yeah, 1 over 6, what? 1 over 6 squared, not just 1 over 6, right? You have to add something, right, to both sides that are, something squared to both sides, and that is 1 over 6. And then how did you get 1 over 6? It's half of? Yeah, it's half of B, isn't it? 1 third. So do you agree? Do you understand where I got 1 6 from, guys? I need to add both sides by 1 6 squared, right? Not just 1 6, right? Half of B squared. So that's what I'm doing. And notice I need to multiply this out because, can somebody tell me, what does that trinomial become then? This does not involve any math. It's just looking at the pattern. Okay. What does that trinomial become? Carolyn? 8 plus 1 over 6 squared. Thank you. It just becomes 8 plus 1 over 6 squared. Do you see why I highlighted 8 and 1 over 6 there? Isn't, it, isn't that what it becomes? On the right side, do you think I should multiply 1 over 6 squared out? Yes, because I need to add that to 3. So. There you go, it's 1 over 36. And why am I multiplying 3 over 1 with 36 over 36? Because I need a common denominator. Okay. So as a matter of fact, in the beginning here, I should have just written this instead of a over 3. Would this be better for you? 1 third times a. As you can see, you can see your b lot clearer, right? 
Because a is really a over 1, right? 1 third times a over 1, isn't that a over 3 anyway? So maybe it's better to write it this way so you can see your b right, clearly. All right, so then when I do this, I get 108 over 36 plus 1 over 36. You understand? Okay, go ahead, everybody, finish it up. Finish up the rest then. You should be able to now finish and get the right answer. I'll wait for you. Go ahead, everybody try. All right, somebody tell me what we get next. How about Aiden? Oh, um, when I add these together on the right side, I get? Yeah, um, 109 over 36. That's right. And it's kind of, is, one, is 109 a perfect square? No. No, so it's okay. If it's not a perfect square, that's why we do the completion square method, right? All right, so we're going to square root both sides. Did you all get, did you all remember to put plus or minus? Yes. Because if you don't, you lose one of your solution, right? So, of course, when you do that, I get 109 over, square root of 109 over square root of 36. I did that because I know that square root of 36 is, well, 6. Okay, so, and of course, the square root and then the square, the whole thing's cancel out. So I get a plus 1, 6 equals 2, positive or negative, 109 over 6. Right? Claire, what should I do next? Oh, sorry, my number. Mm -hmm. um, then you subtract. One six Correct. On each side. Exactly. Tell me what to write. A is equal to negative one six plus or minus <laughs> square root of one over six. Yes. And this time it's nice because they have a common denominator, don't we? So yeah, you don't want to leave it like this. Remember, I told you to write it as a one fraction. Chuck, what would that be? Negative one rad one oh nine over six. Almost. Who could help Chuck here? Uh yes, Samantha? Negative one plus or minus yeah. one. Oh, yeah. You need plus or minus because if you just write negative one, one on nine, that means negative one times one on nine. Yes, yes. Could you do um, plus or minus rad one on nine minus one? Yeah, but I said don't write it after the square root because it looks like it may be inside of it. So you always want to want to write the regular number first, then the square root at the end if you can. All right, so this represents two numbers because I don't want you to even write it this way because some people think that this represents one number, which is not true. This represents two numbers, right, Christina? What are the two numbers that this represents? Mm -hmm. Over six. six, yes, right. So it does represent these two numbers. I wrote the one that's smaller first. Negative one minus 109 over six, or A equals negative one plus rad 109 over six. Does that, yeah, so that's your final answer. Does that make sense? Okay, does that make sense, guys? All right, good. Does this help you guys a bit in terms of, okay, to kind of, okay, good. So hopefully this, Hope you for tonight's homework you're gonna have similar ones like this again, right? Uh, these are odd, so make sure you check the answers. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Can we do good. Them